While dendrites can generate graded potentials, somas can generate graded potentials. Axons only propagate action potentials. That's it, okay? If there is not enough of a potential difference across the membrane of a neuron to reach AP, the axon doesn't do anything, okay? But if there is graded potential to threshold, the axon enters AP. This AP does not lose strength, even if the axon is three feet long. Based on the way ax potentials work, it never loses strength. Once generated in the central nervous system, it will continue and with the same strength, the same magnitude of, of polar, depolarization and pol repolarization, doesn't matter, anywhere around its length. So the strength of an action potential always remains the same, okay? There is no endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus in the axon, and so the axon has to rely upon the nerve cell body to provide substances that it needs in order to maintain its physiology, communicate, do action potentials, resting membrane potential, all of that. So no surprise, if you remember this right here, when you get into your clinical practice and somebody asks you about, well, his nerves cut, you know, will, will, will he ever be able to get it back? Remember that those axons now have been deprived of their source of, of materials because they, the axon has been cut and severed away from the nerve cell body. It can't get what it needs to maintain function. It now functions, okay? All right. About 10 more minutes left. This is helping you understand then the fact that axons, whether in the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, uh, oftentimes then are um, modified with this thing called the myelin sheath. Segmented sheath around most long or large diameter axons are referred to as myelinated fibers. Okay? And there's actually a color difference between myelinated fibers and non-myelinated fibers, or what we call non-myelinated fibers. And this is something that is actually visually something you can see in dissection. You can see when there's a large dominance of myelin in a nervous tissue when there isn't. Okay? Um, myelinated tissue looks whitish, yellowish due to the presence of fat there. Okay? So what you're seeing here, uh, no great explanation needed. You're simply seeing that as an axon is being built, Schwann cells in the peripheral system will surround the axon. I would point out this area right here, and that is the cytoplasm of the cell is actually eliminated from the overlap point in this area. The cytoplasm instead resides in the most peripheral portion of the Schwann cell. Schwann cell is a living cell, okay? But there is no need for cytoplasm in there. The primary purpose of this wrapping is for insulation protection, okay? All right? What does it do? Protects and electrically insulates the axon, and this is what we'll focus on, increases the speed of impulse transmission, okay? When we talk about the need to make adjustments rapidly, more than likely, the effector is going to be serviced by a myelinated axon, okay? So if I'm walking down the road and I trip over something and I raise out my hands and I, sh I change my body position, considering that it's occurring in a split second, okay, pretty much so I don't fall on my face, we're talking about myelinated axons that are used to get the information to and from the central nervous system. And then even in the CNS, myelination is used. Okay? So that's the big thing there, is it speeds up impulse of, excuse me, the speeds up the rate of impulse transmission. This is an electron micrograph. You can see 24,000 times magnification. So there is your axon's diameter, but it's 24,000 times magnified. So we're talking about something that's really small, and then you can see how the myelin really does consist of 
simply the phospholipid bilayer of the Schwann cell. The rest of the Schwann cell we can see is out here, okay? But that is phospholipid bilayer. Not much cytoplasm there, the primary job is just simply surround, okay? This is something that comes from your book. And now that we've considered body, dendrites, axons, we look at different kinds of neurons. Your time spent on this diagram will be well spent. The first thing we see is that there are structural classifications, okay? We are then going to take the neuron and organize it into three regions. And this is important and worth your time as well, okay? So if we start at the top, structural class multipolar, bipolar, unipolar, or pseudo-unipolar, okay? Let's look at the major difference. By the way, bipolar has nothing to do with the disorder. It has to do with the structure of the neuron, okay? Uh, this is a multipolar neuron. Many processes extend from from the cell body, all are dendrites except for a single axon. So there's your definition of a multipolar neuron. I still don't know the derivation or why we name it that. Bipolar, two processes extend from cell body. One is a fused dendrite, the other is an axon. So in this situation, they're calling that a dendrite and then it has uh, kind of a bunch of, I wouldn't say necessarily endings, let's call it Sometimes these are referred to as free nerve endings, but they're more like free nerve beginnings, okay? Because that's where the impulse comes from. You'll notice then that uh, there aren't, there isn't a lot of branching off of the off the body. It's one basic branch for dendrite, one for axon, and then off it goes. So bipolar seems to work. There are two poles on this this cell, and then pseudo unipolar, okay, or unipolar. Again, we have these areas here known as receptive endings, but this whole thing here is referred to as an axon, okay? And the nerve cell body then is somewhere off to the side. When we looked at satellite cells, what we were seeing were nerve cell bodies of this kind of neuron being surrounded and protected uh, outside of the CNMs, okay? No big deal here, all right, just different kinds. This one's rare. This is rare. Found in two places that I know of. The olfactory epithelium, sense of smell, and in the retina of the eye. I don't know of any other places. There probably are a few others, but they're rare. So not a real common type. This one, very common. This one, most common. The multipolar neuron is the most common neuron in the human system. Now let's try to figure out what the heck we're seeing here. The relationship of the anatomy to three functional regions. The regions are given as receptive region as a stimulus accepting area, the conducting region, a region of the cell that conducts an impulse, and the secretory region where neurotransmitters release to pass that impulse to the next cell. As we can see here on a multipolar neuron, the nerve cell body and the, all of its dendrites are considered receptive. This is where other neurons can send their impulses and communicate with this multipolar neuron. In the green area here, we're talking the conducting region. This is where action potentials occur. Graded potentials occur in the receptive area. This is where multiple neurons can release their neurotransmitters and affect the polarity across the membrane of the cell, maybe trying to push it towards AP or maybe trying to inhibit it and push it away. But if AP occurs, it's going to then travel down this trigger zone, however long that trigger zone, or excuse me, however long that conducting region is, that's where it's going to travel, until it finally reaches the axon terminals where it secretes its neurotransmitter. If you take a look at the bipolar neuron, it's not that much different. It's dendrites and soma that are the receptive area, and then the axon is the conducting area, and then the, the secreting area then axon terminals. Then we'll end with this because you guys are ready to be done. This is the one that's sort of interesting and that one is the receptive area is, is an area of free nerve endings. This is the type of neuron that is going to provide pain sensations in your skin. 
because these receptive region, this receptive region of this neuron is right up under the epidermis. And if you bang it, smash it, cut it, poke it, you're gonna disturb these things and an axe potential is gonna be sent to the CNS. You'll notice that this area is called the conducting zone then, and this was our axon. Axons are typically where we see conducting zones, okay? So remember table 11, it helps us to understand the difference between, as well as then, how the cell receives info and sends it along. I'll see you in the lab here in about 15 minutes or so.